Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our next episode of Mixed Messages with Jeff Bogue. My name is Joe Caruso, and I'll be your host as we dig into today's topic. Thanks for jumping on board with us today. Man, oh man, it seems like from news sources to comedians, from friends to advertisements, it seems everyone has an idea of how we should think, live, and make decisions. When even the experts sound convincing, but they disagree, how do we cut through the noise? And when information overload leaves us frustrated, how do we sift through it all and choose what governs our lives? Our leadership here at Grace has been processing and praying about these things, and we want to offer a resource to navigate some of the day's most pressing topics and questions. So here we are. Jeff, how are we doing today? Pretty good. Excellent. Pretty good. Pert, pert near good. Pert, pert near good. Well, the rest of our... No, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of our episode will not be in a Come on, bad You're from Barbara, and you can talk this way. You know how I'm to do Barbara, it. from Barbara, Tucky. Um, oh, there's Buddy, so I grew, many Buddy, I grew up in Beaver Creek. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to take a step beyond Barberton, Beaver Creek would be the place to do that. And when I was little, it was still beavers in the creek. Right. <laughs> that There's a big, I grew up down near Dayton, and there's a big highway that runs through Beaver Creek now called 675. I literally rode my bicycle on that before it was opened up to traffic. That's fantastic. So like it, it was, think of like Doylestown becoming... Like a legacy village, that's literally what happened to Beaver Creek. Beaver Creek. So there, there was like this massive cultural like. That's amazing. Hello, I'm from Gucci. <laughs> well, I shot that leather. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. Which brings us to our question of the day. So beaver skin, no. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Well, uh, we're here in the middle of January 2021, and uh, we have a question that was submitted by one of our listeners, Jeff. And uh, the short version of their question is, uh, to get the vaccine or not, do I trust the medical world? Or do I trust Psalm 91? And for context, uh, Psalm 91 is a great passage about who God is. And one of the phrases in that passage says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So that's the context of the listener's question. Jeff, do we trust the medical world? Do we trust God in Psalm 91? What do we do about this vaccine? Yeah, we trust both, right? Yeah. We do we do that all the time and and uh I I don't know, when I'm really really sick, I like taking a pill. Yeah. <laughs> like I like that <laughs> right. a lot. I got a headache right now. I'm thinking about an ibuprofen yeah, here a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, through 2020, I had one of those big bottles of ibuprofen. I <laughs> burned it pretty much to to uh 2:30 every day my stress headache would take over my face. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we do both, and we do this all the time. We're grateful for medicine, right? Mm-hmm. I, I am. You know, I, I, uh, I'm grateful that there are life-saving procedures. I'm grateful that if I have a blocked artery, it could be fixed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm grateful. Uh, you know, one, I don't talk about this much, but I, I have a condition called gout mm-hmm. where my kidneys don't process a, an acid right. And man, you've never felt something so painful in your whole life when that settles into my toes and ankle. And uh, my 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 doctor uh, put me on a little ten milligram pill, and it literally changed my life. Wow! And so I'm like, I'm super glad <laughs> that that exists. I'll never forget, you know, just coming out of Christmas season. I don't remember if that was five years ago or so, but you had a bad flare-up during the Christmas program. Yeah. And I remember watching you. You could, were struggling. I couldn't stand. Well, when I first got it, I didn't know what it was. I thought I broke my ankle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was walking around in a, a, a boot, and then my friend, um, I went and had an x-ray, and there was nothing wrong with it, but the pain was so bad. And my friend had a Tim's unit. Oh, yeah. And I put it on there, and it just numbed my... I literally couldn't feel my foot it numbed my foot it was miserable and then my my friend uh nick um i called him up he's a doctor i called him on on uh i think it was new year's eve and i was like i'm coming to your house (laughs) and he's like well pastor jeff i'm like right I'm Pastor Jeff. <laughs> I am coming to you. It's the only time I've ever done it. I'm like, give me your address. And and uh, Nick, he's a doctor, and he figured it out and put me on this pill. So anyways, this is a funny story, but the but I'm grateful for stuff like that, right? right? Yep. 
and you think about you know our our children and and we most people vaccinate their children. I know that some people really are against that, which is up to you, but most people do that. You and I have traveled the world doing mission stuff. Yep. J- Joe's main job is our missions pastor, and and one of his main he's got about four main jobs, but. <laughs> um, but we've gone in and out of Chad Africa. We got to go get juiced up for everything. Yep. We, you have to have a yellow fever shot yep, to yep. go in. And malaria. I have live malaria uh, vaccinations. Typhoid, hepatitis, Ty- you name it. All of it. So so I think we're used to this. Most most people are vaccinated for measles and even uh, chicken pox and things like that. When you think back about like polio – Praise God that he gave man the insight to er- to figure out how to eradicate that. Yep. I, I understand all of that. Um, I My personal opinion, I think if this vaccine wasn't so politicized, we'd be cheering it more sure. like, like we did polio. Now, um, are you going to take it? And, and, and I know that's what the question that's really being asked. And what I would say is this. Like if you said uh, – Pastor Jeff, are you going to take the vaccine? I would say I need to understand what it is. Um, for instance, I don't get a flu shot, and I just never have. And my I, several of my friends here at the church are doctors, and, and uh, some of them would say, well, you should get a flu shot. And then some of them would say, well, I mean, if you've been fine, you've been fine. Mm-hmm. You know, and my doctor, I was talking to her, she doesn't go to the church. Um, my, this is my old doctor. My new doctor does go to the church, but um, before she retired, my old doctor, I was talking to her, and she's like, you should get a flu shot. And I was like, but I've never had the flu. And she's like, well, but this will help you not get the flu. I'm like, but I've never had it. <laughs> so I don't know if there's if if there's something about my body or if I just interact with so many people that my... It's those Beaver Creek genes. It's those Beaver Creek, that Beaver Creek water, man. <laughs> you know, so I think there's that kind of stuff that people have to evaluate it. But uh, COVID is real. COVID is highly contagious. Uh, COVID mostly shows up as the flu. Mm-hmm. But it's nasty if it goes further. I mean, we know people. I know people. I love people that uh, some have lost their lives with these other medical conditions. And then some have just been wickedly and horribly sick. And so I think it's up to you what you want to do. I can tell you that if I was going to Haiti to work with our churches there, and they said I had to have a COVID shot, I would just go get one. Sure. I mean, I got yellow fever. Right. Shot. Right. Typhoid, all the stuff you're just talking about. Like, I have a record, right? You have one, too, because we had to get the same shots because we went to the same places. But I'm like, if I'll do that, I'll get a COVID vaccine. I don't don't care. I get when people are like, it it was rushed and it's new. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm probably that guy that – would rather wait a year or two, sure. You know, um, but if it if it meant uh, keeping other people healthy, I might be more motivated. If it meant you don't have to be worried about getting it, I'd be like, I'm not real worried, anyways. You know, uh, because I interact with so many people, I I probably have either had it a little bit or will. G- or am, have some antibodies toward or something like that, you know what I'm saying? So I just think people have to navigate that. Spiritually, I don't think you should, you should um, worry. Mm-hmm. And so I would be careful. Like when people say, well, the Lord's going to protect me, first of all, I would say, well, do you practice that in every aspect of your life? Do you drive without a seatbelt? Do you, right. you know, do you eat? Uh, roadkill, you know, those kind of things. I'm like, we, we use common sense things. And the, my, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are stewards of that temple. And so I try to do things to my body that will care for my body. I also want to use my body to serve the Lord and serve people. That's why I would get a yellow fever shot, mm-hmm. right? Because I, I want to support that work and do those things there. 
so I put my seatbelt on. I um, I go to the doctor and get a checkup once a year. Uh, I take my gout medicine. I never miss my gout medicine, <laughs> you know. And if I have a headache, I take something. If I get a bad cold, I get Advil, cold and flu, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it, it's a I I think it's in those categories of of things. Yeah, I think that the the temptation in times like this. Even even politics aside, because like you mentioned earlier, like this one gets politicized real real fast. Yeah, it's almost cr- it's it's ridiculous mm-hmm. how it gets politicized. Honestly, um, the temptation is also to put uh, our our efforts and like the medical world above our trust of what God is doing. Like if I don't do this, I will get it or I will die. Yeah. Um, and none of that obviously is true. Like God is in there somewhere. And I think that's what you're saying, that trust, uh, that trust fits. And, and I think there's a, you know, when I think about this whole question, not so much the vaccine, but the trusting God, I go back to Heidi's mom, my mother-in-law mm. in, in 2003, uh, we were on spring break with Heidi's family. Kids were little back then, um, on let's say Tuesday Heidi's mom was playing on the beach with uh, our children. On Wednesday, she had a terrible migraine. On Friday, they came home. On Monday, we were told she had inoperable brain cancer. I mean, it was that kind of a thing. And the the doctor looked at her, and, and she mom was an incredible lady of faith, just an amazing lady, truly an amazing lady. Hmm. And, and by the way, my father-in-law is too, and and uh, just wonderful people of faith. And the doctor walked in, and he said, uh, "He said, here's your thing. You have fourteen and uh, fourteen brain tumors. Wow. I can do radiation, get your migraines better. You'll live three months. Uh, I can do chemo. You'll live six months. We can do gamma knife brain surgery, and there may be side effects. You can live 12 months. And mom said, I would like the radiation, and I want to go home. And she died uh, about three months later. Wow. Now, she did not commit suicide. Right. And she did not um, reject medicine. Uh, she put her faith in the Lord. Now, that, that is a very v- dramatic example, but it's really what we're talking about, where, where medicine— this was all at the Cleveland Clinic, by the way. Med- medicine was saying, hey, Cleo, there's nothing, <laughs> you know, and, and medicine hits a point, and, and an honest doctor will tell you sometimes, you know, those things. Um, I am confident that if he said, we can do this one thing— and you can have five to ten more years worth of life. I'm confident she would have done it, you know, because she she wasn't afraid of that stuff. But she was like, you know, ultimately my life belongs to the Lord. My dad was like this. My mm-hmm. dad, uh, he was 74. There was all kinds of heroic end of life craziness that could have been done. And my dad said, uh, Jeff, he said, uh, he told my mom actually. He said, uh, Phyllis, he goes, I don't want to be in the nursing home, and. Um, and I, I want to be with you guys mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. So that was on May 10th. I'll never forget. That's my birthday. And Dad died September 18th. Yeah. And we took him home. And we, we took care of him. Um, we had hospice in. We used some medicine to, to uh, help his pain and stuff like that. But dad and mom, my dad, Heidi's mom, were like, what are we fighting for? We're, we are going to be with the Lord. We're not trying to leave the planet. You know, mom was only 57. Right. So th- they, they didn't have death wishes. They were happy, godly, effective people. But they're like, we're not going to fear death. Mm-hmm. And I, I think medicine, like when you talk about the COVID vaccine, if it's about fearing death, then I would double click on your heart. Yeah. If it's about living life to the fullest, we use medicine that way. That's what my gout medicine is. It's like I want to play basketball and run around with my kids, and and my my friend Nick is like, "Well, this little pill will help." I'm like, <laughs> and it did, and I'm like, "Great!" You he was able to kind of 
easily fix a little tweak in my kidneys. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was kind of no big deal. You see what I'm saying? But I think I think when we fear it, like is the vaccine going to alter your DNA? I'm like, no, come on. Is it the is it the tracking system for the mark of the beast? I'm like, <laughs> no. You get <clears throat> shots all the time. Right. You know, we we could attract each other that way. Uh, 50 years ago or 70 years ago if we wanted to do that. Um, this is a, uh, a amplified version of the flu shot, if I understand it correctly. Sure. Now, doctors out there, I am not a medical doctor, and you should not get your medical advice from me. I don't even want to remotely come off that way. Right. But if I understand it right, this is a virus, and so it's a amplified version of a flu shot. It's a preventative vaccine for that strand mm-hmm. of COVID-19. And I would be like, well, it's up. It's kind of up to you. And, and if it means freedom and effectiveness, I get it, mm-hmm. you know. And is there side effects? Well, of course. You give something to a billion people, somebody's going to react wrong to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's every that's everything. medicine, you know. There's mm-hmm. nothing knew about any of that yeah it's uh it's fun what you're saying there and the passage i'm about to bring up has a lot of more richness to it than the application i'm going to bring forward but the apostle paul says to live as christ and to die as gain and i think what you're saying is if like the way that we pursue our life should be rooted in life for christ but if if death seems like it's on you know, the doorstep, so to speak. It's like, right, as a follower of Christ, that's actually a, a good thing in the long run. We go home, right? And that's why we don't grieve like those that have no hope. And there's so many great, yeah. wonderful passages about what that uh, looks like. But we don't have, if it's when we're living in fear that we should be double clicking. Yeah. You know, when my dad was dying, um, we we cared for him around the clock in our house. It was a job, yeah. and and I would do it again in a heartbeat. I was honored to do it, uh, but it was exhausting. And Heidi was a Heidi would take the day shift and I take the night shift basically. And 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 my and my siblings were my my sisters and my brother were also very involved. Yeah, my father's children cared for him, not not just Heidi. Not my brother in laws, the family I thought was. I thought our family really did amazing through mm. all that. So I was proud of my my family and my dad. I think that's what my dad really wanted. He wanted to be surrounded with his kids. Um, but one day I was out uh, of the house. I just kind of took a walk. And if you've ever cared for somebody long term, uh, like that, the I'm going to get some fresh air is it, shocking how important that is. And so I was just out for a walk and. I bumped into a lady, and uh, she asked about my dad. I was telling her, and she goes, "She goes, I would like to come into your home and pray over your dad." And I said, well, "I said, oh, I said, um, she'd never met him before, and she had only just met me." And so I'm like, "Oh, um, why?" She said, "I'm going to pray that God brings healing and life to him, and that he will overcome this issue." And I said. Uh, I said, well, I don't, I don't want you to come in and pray over my dad. Hmm. It would make him really uncomfortable. And she goes, you don't want your dad to live? And I looked at her. I was, I was a little out of gas. I looked at her. I go, for how long? Right. What are we talking? He, he's 74, which is not super old, but it's not, I'm like, to 75? My, my father is, my father is going to live. In fact, what is mortal is going to be swallowed up by life. He is not afraid of that. Um, His children are not little. Um, He has done his job as a dad. We all, my siblings and I and all, and our children all walk with the Lord. I mean, he's given us this incredible heritage, he and my mom. And I'm like, what are we prolonging here? And and not only are we not prolonging, but you're you're also trying to rob my dad of his testimony. <laughs> you know, par- part of my dad's um, 
part of the power of his parenting is how he died. You know, and I'm like, I, that is ingrained in me. And I'm like, I don't, why do you want to short circuit all of that? Now, my father had a massive stroke when he was 49, a massive heart attack when he was 48, a massive stroke when he was 49. He had quadruple bypass surgeries, multiple stents. So medicine kept him alive for 25 years, Mm -hmm. right? I'm so glad I needed him, right? I'm grateful he fought to live. It was a different conversation. There were options. These other options at the end of his life were like, well, six more months, three more months. And my dad's like, I just want to, I just want to be with my family. Why would I want to be in a hospital and see him two hours a day? Right. You know? So I think we wrestle with all that stuff. I think the, I think the vaccine, you know, yes or no, I'm like, I don't know, up to you, you know, either way. Um, I think it's the thought process behind it all. You know, if I'm a doctor, my, my one buddy, uh, Dave, is a, uh, is a doctor, a good friend of mine, and I saw he posted that he got the vaccine. I'm like, right, because he wants to practice medicine, right. <laughs> you know, and, and, and because he, wants, he doesn't want to make his family sick. And I'm like, right, you know, and, and you're a teacher. My, I was talking to my neighbor the other night. He's a teacher. He wants the vaccine so he can go teach his kids. Right. So I'm like, if it gives you life and freedom – Go for it. I love it. I love it. It's um, <clears throat> it's amazing how much uh, really so many of these topics boil down to this particular point, but so much of this is put your trust in God first. Yep. And, and then <laughs> seek the Lord, lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I don't, I'm not a doctor. I want to serve Christ. If medicine helps me or allows me to do that, I'm probably in on it. If it hinders or keeps me from doing that, I'm probably out on it. And we're all going to die. Yep. And I'm not anxious to, um, but I don't, I'm not afraid of it. Yep. You know, and, and so, and, and if you guys think about it, that's, that's how most people live. Like I don't, I put on my seatbelt, not because I like being locked in a chair. Right. It just kind of makes sense <laughs> you sure. know, to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for listening in today, everyone. It's been great to process this with you, and I want to continue to encourage you to go to the Lord about this, to continue to build in your trust of God as he directs your steps and directs your path. And your pathway may look a little bit differently regarding this topic than your neighbor, and that's all right. It's about following Christ and allowing uh, your trust to continue to grow in him. If you have questions, like even like this one, that you'd like to submit, you can always do so on our website at bath.gracechurches.org slash mixed messages. Go ahead and fill out your question. We'll get to those as quickly as we can in our coming episodes. And also, if you need to reach out to us in any way, feel free to do so. We'd love to help you take your unique steps in your faith in Christ. You can always subscribe to our different channels or follow us. And of course, you can always follow us or join us on the weekend, whether in person if you're in the area or on line. Well, thanks for jumping in with us today as we continue to seek God's voice as we jump in through all of the mixed messages around us. We'll see you next week.